My name is Kutsia Khan and I'm originally from Pakistan. Pakistan is Southeast Asia. Our culture is sort of ingrained in the family structure. Everyone's very close um, and um, everyone takes care of each other. We don't have um, the concept of kids leaving the house when they turn 18. Your parents pretty much take care of you for as long as they, they need to or as long as someone you know gets on their feet. I finished med school um, and my parents paid for everything. My parents paid for my wedding. Um, so in that sense, it's, um, it's very, everything's very fam family oriented. The process coming to US, uh, what we call as a uh, foreign medical graduate, um, at that time it was called FMG and now it's called, I think, International Medical Graduates, IMG. It's a very complex one um, where you have to, in order to obtain a uh, pra practicing license in the United States, you have to pass licensing exams and there is um, a few of them and not to anyone's surprise, very rigorous. The whole process is very um, daunting. Uh, it's, uh, it's a complex process and as a young um, adult, you're trying to start your life. So obviously you feel like a lot is at stake. So you really wanna get everything right. But in terms of um, applying for the, the visa process, so I initially came in um, as, on a visa which was specific for a dependent spouse. My husband was already in US at that time. So I came uh, on a dependent spouse visa, which later on after I got into US, I applied for my own um, uh, physician training visa or uh, the visa that they give to skilled individuals uh, while they're in training. Once you apply for the visa, the, the next step at that time used to be that you had to go to Islamabad, which is the, the capital, where the U.S. consulate was located. So that process was very different because at that time, this is, I'm, I'm talking post 9-11. So obviously the security um, parameters at that time changed, especially around the, the U.S. consulate. I found that process to be very different. Um, so I remember like you could not just drive up to the to a parking lot. You had to be dropped off at a certain location and you had to get on a bus. You have first, I mean, you had to get um, an interview date, you apply and then you wait for an interview date. They get all your original documents and then you just wait. So whenever they call you, it could be six weeks. It could be sometimes in some cases I've heard it could be six months. So. So you essentially, on your the day of the interview, you just get dropped off at a drop-off location and there's a bus that picks you up and then the bus takes you to the U.S. consulate. And then also getting in a line, really, it's, the whole process starts really early in the day. Um, so getting in a line and going through security and then finally you go, uh, go in. And there's so, like all these people are around you and everyone's uh, trying to do the same thing. Obviously not everyone's going uh, to pursue, you know, higher education. People are there for, you know, different purposes of their, whatever their visit might be. Um, so that process was very different. And, uh, and then when you go in for the interview, uh, I see that a lot of people were very, very nervous and confusing. For some people, it seemed like it was a matter of, my gosh, like something very high risk. I landed um, in Chicago in, two th in summer of 2002 and um, so I was there for a number of years so initially I was involved before I um, took my licensing exams and got into a, uh, a training program also known as residency program. So I was at Northwestern University for, um, for a few years doing some bench research and then um, while I was doing that, my husband was finishing up his medical training, medical residency training, and um, as he was finishing, it was around that we sort of overlapped with our uh, training. Uh, so after he finished, he just applied for jobs all 
across US. So uh, typically what happens is that recruiters contact you, they pull up your information and they just randomly contact you. So he was um, contacted by someone um, for a job in Sumner, uh, Washington. So he just um, happened to like the Pacific Northwest. We had visited one other time and he was just really, he fell in love with the, the mountain. Um, uh, so when he um, landed and um, gave that interview, he just immediately fell in love with the area and he called me and he's like, um, I think I found the place where we were gonna retire. Nobody leaves their hometown for fun. I would say that, you know, my story is not a sad one, fortunately. I, I came here um, by choice. I wasn't forced, I, was, I wasn't fleeing some war zone or something. But at the same time, uh, looking back, um, as I was saying before, it's hard to adjust to a new culture, right? Uh, when all your life you've called, you've known a tap, and all of a sudden it becomes a faucet. So, uh, and then the other things, the metric system, uh, uh, and then driving on the wrong side of the road and all that, right? So nobody leaves their home country or hometown for fun. Um, U.S. Is a, is a land of opportunities, and it is, I think, um, it's built on the premise that, you know, everyone should have equal opportunities and um, and I think that's really the the success of the uh, United States. So I think as a community or as a city we need to keep that in mind that anytime we come across someone who is either newly immigrated or whatever they might be in their in their life cycle not to judge and be kind because you don't know the other person's story. In a primary care setting, you see your patients um, a lot, right? Sometimes our patients, they're older, they're um, not doing very well. So sometimes I, f I find that uh, we see them more than they see their families. So you kind of become very close, right? And uh, so they, they worry about you. Uh, so the, the biggest worry is that, is everything okay back home? Is there a war? Uh, is your family okay? And the kind of um, um, concerns I, I hear are really about the safety and security of my family or when I'm visiting for, for me. Um, it's, it's almost like I'm going into a war zone. And I tell them, you know, that's not how Pakistan is. Uh, it's, um, it's very different. It's a, it's, um, a country of... Um, more than 50% uh, young people. So um, they're growing, they're living their lives, uh, and there's really no war happening in Pakistan. Yes, there were some tough times post 9-11. There was, so Pakistan has been hit um, by, uh, the, by terrorism, and also I think it's um, the country that um, suffered the most due to the war on terrorism. Our military and our people, um, I think, paid the heaviest price for the U.S. war on terrorism. Um, so there were some dark times, uh, but I think this whole con con uh, concept about, oh my gosh, for some reason, you know, there is this ongoing war in Pakistan or things are... Um, not okay. I think that is something which I which I struggle with a lot. That's number one. And then number two, uh, being a woman, being a Muslim woman, I also, um, you know, get um, the idea of um, women being oppressed. Um, and in certain, I think in certain ways, part of it could be true, uh, maybe in certain parts. Uh, but for the most part, I think Pakistani women are um, educated, they're independent, and they're very empowered, um, and they are um, moving forward. So if anything, if I could change that mis uh, misconception or that false perception that for some reason Pakistani women or Muslim women in general need some sort of 
savior or, or something. I think that needs to be changed. Um, I think we have come a long way, at least in the last um, 20 some years that I've been in US when I go back. It's so heartening to see that, you know, more and more women uh, pursuing higher education. Um, girls are, um, in general, I think are scoring far better than boys uh, in any competitive exams. Um, and they're in every uh, field of life. I see them working, so that's um, really nice to see. I think uh, the best advice that I could give anyone uh, would be to keep working hard and do not ever compromise on your education. Because I think if, I, um, if I'm sitting here uh, and I'm willing to talk about this experience, a big part of who I am is because of the education I, I, I pursued. Uh, so, and I think in that sense, um, America is amazing because anyone can reach for their dreams and make it make it a truth if they worked hard. When we first moved to US, it was, as I said before, it was very lonely, just the two of us, and most then most of the time we were either working or studying or something. So um, after we had a family and we started celebrating, um, we made this conscious choice that we will make it um, eventful for our family and also our, um, our neighbors and um, our Pakistani community. So we try to have a big gathering on uh, our holiday celebration of Eid. Um, so we have, uh, like last year, we had around 100, 120 people. But the, the, these folks are just from all across um, Seattle, the greater Seattle area, not just Tacoma. So that becomes sort of like an event, a really good event. And then um, in Islamic Center during the month of Ramadan when we fast, uh, we try to have um, at least once or twice during that month, we try to have like a big, um, the, the evening meal where we break our fast, it's called iftar. So we try to have like a big gathering and we, like last year, um, we had like about 300 people show up. So, so yeah, so we, we, we try to do it on our own, but I, I would love to see more community involvement in that regard. I, I did not realize this when I when I moved here, but um, my daughter, who's in college, described it uh, one time in a conversation, um, and she took a picture of our uh, street where we, we used to live, and uh, she posted it, uh, and she just wrote home, and that really, um, you know, sort of, um, it was in. I shouldn't say it was an eye opener, but it, it kind of felt differently. Um, so I think Tacoma has been good to us. I, w I would say it's a great city. Uh, as I said, we chose Tacoma to raise our family. Um, so we, we, we really love Tacoma in that sense. I think um, there is a diverse community in Tacoma. Um, and uh, I think the, the most unique part is, you know, the you know, you're, if you're at the commencement bay, you know, you, are, you can enjoy the ocean and then you turn around and then you have Mount Rainier. So I think that just in itself um, is just so remarkable. Um, and as I said before, I mean, um, my kids grew up here, so no matter where they go, they're gonna take that Tacoma part because when someone asks them where they're from, they say Tacoma.